morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, based on wherever you folks are. Uh, since this is a virtual keynote, I'm assuming people will be joining from uh, different parts of the world. So first thing first, uh, since we are uh, going through an unprecedented time, I am assuming and uh, wishing everyone to be safe uh, and healthy. Um, so please do take care wherever you folks are. Uh, let me start with a very quick introduction from my end. Uh, my name is Parag Kulkarni and I'm the Chief Operating Officer at CalSoft um, and uh, Head the Engineering Team at CalSoft also. I have with me my co-speaker Vipin Shankar and I'll ask him to introduce himself in a few words. Vipin. Thank you Parag. Hi, this is Vipin Shankar. I am a VP of Engineering at CalSoft. I'm really happy to be returning back as a SDC speaker. Um, this uh, virtual SDC conference uh, promises to be quite uh, exciting. I see a lot of events in the next two days. Um, looking forward to attending all those events. Thank you, Parak. Over to you. Thank you, Vipin. Uh, so folks, we both represent CalSoft and in just a couple of lines, I'll talk about CalSoft. We are a product engineering services company. Uh, we specialize or focus into the data center technologies, that is storage, virtualization, networking. And over the past two decades, actually, we have had the opportunity to work with some of the large, mid-size, and uh, early-stage startup companies in the storage space. And uh, uh, you know, as a part of that, actually, we have seen the evolution of storage in the last two decades. Uh, you know how storage technology has come uh, in in the recent past, actually, based upon the different customer expectation. Uh, we have seen those uh, changes in the storage technology. And as a part of this session, as a part of this uh, presentation, actually, we are going to talk about that, share our experiences, um, like disruptions, various different uh, opportunities, funding trends, um, uh, mergers and acquisition, and where we see storage next, actually, you know, where the technology is heading to is what we're going to talk about. Uh, very quickly on the agenda, actually we have divided this presentation in uh, four uh, sections or rather five sections. Um, you know, we'll leave the questions and answer towards the end of it because I assume this is a um, recorded session. So uh, we may not be able to uh, interrupt for the questions in between. Uh, so we'll take the questions and answers towards the end of it. But we'll start with an industry recap uh, where we will talk about the various different funding trends in the storage where, you know, how the storage industry has evolved actually and has come to what it is today. Uh, we'll talk about various different mergers and acquisition and, uh, uh, you know, then we'll fast forward to the industry, uh, you know, where we are, what are the different segments of storage uh, today. Uh, how they are doing, uh, you know, what are the different, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, changes that are happening in each segment. We'll also talk a little bit about the COVID-19 impact. Uh, you know, we're not going to talk more about, um, you know, how COVID is changing the road roadmap of uh, uh, storage industry, but we'll talk about what are the positives, uh, you know, uh, take away from COVID-19. And then we'll talk about what next, actually, in terms of what is the roadmap uh, for uh, uh, the storage industry. Uh, both Vipin and myself will take uh, one section each uh, and uh, we'll talk about each of them uh, separately. All right, uh, let's start with the industry recap. Uh, well, if I say that there has been a paradigm shift in the customer expectation in the last two decades, I wouldn't be exaggerating. Um, be it the volumes of the data, be it the types of the data, availability expectation, speed expectation, uh, you know, the requirements or expectations are constantly changing and evolving. Uh, I remember, you know, three decades back when I started my career, um, I, I started working with the data, on the database technologies. And, um, you know, though I worked on some of the very interesting, uh, you know, core R&D part of uh, database, uh, you know, uh, I worked on some of the features like uh, RSAM, which is how, you know, the databases store data into the uh, storage part. Uh, how the access methods are. Oh, I worked on the shared storage and shared nothing are kind of an architecture. I worked on XML data types. So, you know, that, those were different times. In 1990s, our challenges were traditional applications like Salesforce, uh, sales applications, ERP, um, you know, and the uh, structure, more or less structured data. Uh, and then basically protecting the data, protecting the failures. Uh, as it came to 2000 and the first decade of 2000, the e-commerce and dot-com technologies took uh, a completely different turn. Uh, storage became more, uh, you know, moving from the local storage to data centers and, uh, you know, demand evolved 
from local data to remote data and data distributed data so uh, and 24/7 availability so you know there has been a change in the paradigm in 2000 to 2010 from 2010 to 2020 actually there has been a multitude of changes that has happened you know data anywhere uh, you know the expectations changed because of the mobile and social networking you know the, the, the entire expectation changed data anywhere uh rapid collaboration digital communication uh you know single click automation uh those are the new expectation that has come in and as a result of that there has been also a massive churn in the technology uh you know the resulting transformation in the storage technologies are uh, you know from the physical storage uh data centers actually that uh, converge into hyper converged platform digital digital collaboration cloud adoption uh 5g and edge computing ai enabled uh, platforms uh, iot and machine to machine these are the new technologies and new buzzwords actually in terms of the technology and the most interesting part that i see is that um, you know the technologies are enabling more data to be created um, the more data is created the uh, it fuels into more technologies to be added actually uh, and this growth in the data is a key driver for the new innovation of the products and solution in the storage space and that's what we are going to cover in this presentation just take a quick uh, look at the state of the industry uh, as we understand actually from uh, you know where we are today um, uh, what we uh, pr project is that the storage industry is expected to grow by approximately 20, 126 billion in the next 4 years uh, it is at an annual uh, rate of about 26.44% and the 30% of this growth alone is going to come from north america so in summary if i say that it's almost going to double in the next 4 year you know that's what it looks like and the key drivers to this growth is that the data is not restricted to just business application there has been a massive shift in the data uh, you know from the business data to even the social and personal kind of a data actually and the social networking mobile has proliferated this data into everybody's life so a lot of workload today that we see are going to be from ai ml edge and uh, you know 5g kind of a network uh, or machine to machine type of net uh, you know communication that are going to come in uh, i'll give you an interesting kind of perspective of that just last night i was uh, watching a netflix show it was about how social networking companies are using ai and ml uh, engines actually to if for the lack of a better word manipulate our decisions or our consciousness and uh, this was very interesting kind of show needless to say that they have created platform or we have created a platform that is influencing us as the human actually uh, it's almost like terminator uh, or matrix where you know the technology is taking consciousness and that was uh, you know a very interesting thing to uh, observe every click that we have every uh, page that we visit every um, you know uh, uh, you know time that we spent on a particular page becomes a data to these ai and ml engines and based upon that they do recommendation that's you know and and these are the analytics engines that are taking the data and then fueling into back into your uh, decisions making so kind of you know scary uh, but i'll leave it up to everyone to basically for their thoughts as to how this technology is evolving but the big picture is that you know the growing uh data basically uh you know in the next decade actually is going to be coming from data analytics artificial intelligence machine learning blockchain robotic and iot and these kind of an application uh so as we stand on the uh, end of 2020 i see that the next decade will belong to machine to machine communication human sciences and you know there is going to be a massive amount of data that is going to get into uh you know the storage and that's what is going to drive the storage as an industry um i'll also share a very uh, another very interesting uh you know uh, observation actually just a few months back i was in the market looking for a mac uh, uh laptop and i landed up landed up buying a mac pro with 256 gb ram uh just last month i thought i'll upgrade my phone also and i landed up buying a samsung note 20 ultra with 512 gb ram uh, ironically when i retrospect my decision actually i realized that i bought a phone which has more storage capacity than my laptop and i was just wondering why did i do that do i have personal data that is more critical and more than the business data 
Turns out that the answer was yes. And that gave me a feeling that, well, how am I going to protect this data? What kind of technologies that I should be using on my phone to, uh, you know, uh, this, uh, to protect this data? So the way I see is that, you know, the, there has been a paradigm shift in the storage technology also. You know, the storage at one time was, you know, on the PCs and the local storage moved into uh, data center, data center to public cloud, and then basically coming back into edge near you. And now it is coming to you as a person actually and close to you in, in, the, in the form of mobile data. Uh, the way I see is that the technology is evolving to solve this problem is that, you know, when we are transforming from public cloud to edge, cloud, edge gateways, and now we probably may need is a private data center or a personal data center or a personal cloud also. That's how the technologies are evolving. And that's where we see, you know, the growth of data is fueling new technology as well as there is a new data, uh, new growth in the storage industry. Let's quickly look at the, you know, the uh, funding trends uh, from, so we have captured some data from 2017 to 2020. Uh, there are two views that we are presenting here, uh, series wise funding and quarter over quarter funding um, uh, in this slide actually. Uh, one key observation that we wanted to share, actually, uh, or two key observations that we wanted to share. One is, um, you know, uh, depending upon the series of the funding, actually, we have observed in the past, you know, where uh, the funding is happening. It's typically, Series A and Series B funding enables more uh, innovations in the technology, and Series E and Series D are towards the uh, you know, the higher uh, or enabling the sales and growth of a particular industry segment. And as we see in the last probably 13 quarters uh, or from 2017 to 2020, there's been a lot of funding happening in the series uh, E and uh, series C, D and E actually, which says that, you know, there has been a lot of funding that is happening towards enabling certain technology in the storage. And I'll come to that in the next slide. But at the same time, actually, another observation that we have is uh, in the Q2 of 2020, um, we see um, there's a maximum amount of funding that has taken in the last 13 quarter. What that indicates is that in the midst of the pandemic, actually, there has been a lot of funding that is happening on the storage technologies. And we'll come to that in the next slide. So what are the different segments, actually, where the funding is taking place? Um, the funding is taking place, as you can see, in, you know, uh, in few different areas, um, which is all flash, NVMe, uh, uh, you know, the, the um, uh, persistent memory and uh, computational uh, storage, and then basically the cloud storage. And what we have seen is that in the last 13 quarter, uh, in the Q2 of 2020, there has been a lot of funding that took place in cloud storage, which is basically to enable growth into the cloud storage. And of course, you know, the innovation in terms of the persistent memory is also taking place. As you can see, there is a slow increase, uh, steady increase in the, the <clears throat> funding of uh, persistent memory and persistent storage, actually, cloud, computational storage. So just a quick analysis of uh, <clears throat> uh, the VC funding uh, from our end, actually, like I mentioned to you, um, uh, you know, the, depending upon uh, where the uh, uh, funding takes place, typically the Series E, uh, uh, you know, recorded to be the highest in the last two quarters in Q2 and Q3, uh, Q3 of 2020. Uh, company that were got funded were predominantly on the backup and recovery side and the file storage side. Uh, and uh, in the Q2 of 2020, a lot of companies that got uh, funded was in uh, the area of uh, objects and file storage. Uh, data management and all flash array and SSDs. So top use of the funding, like I said, actually typical uh, use of the funding is to either acceleration of the market, uh, uh, you know, uh, trajectory, expand international business scale across the globe and expand worldwide sales and those areas. And the top investors in these areas are Intel Capital, uh, WRVI Capital, Nexus Venture, uh, Western Digital Capital and Vertex and uh, Sequoia Capital. So there has been some interesting shifts that are happening in the funding part of it. <clears throat> Let's look at some of the top mergers and acquisition. Uh, there has been uh, in 2019, as we see, actually there were a lot of acquisition that took place. Uh, Nvidia acquiring Mellanox for almost 6 billion, OpenTex acquiring Carbonite for approximately 1.4 billion, and so on actually. There has been large amount of funding in the storage industry uh, space. 
In 2020, also there has been a lot of acquisition. NetApp acquiring some of the cloud players, uh, spot by uh, you know NetApp. Uh, similarly, NetApp also acquired Cloud Jumper and uh, Talon Storage. Actually, so as you can see, there has been a lot of fun, uh, you know acquisition that are happening into the cloud storage and cloud enablement part. Um, so here is our observation on the storage industry M&A trends. Actually, uh, we do see that there has been decline in the number of acquisitions that are happening in, uh, in, the, in the last few years. This uh, consolidation that took place very heavily in the early parts of uh, 2010 to 2014. And there has been, uh, you know, but there has been a different trend actually. If you look at 2019, there were very big acquisitions, more than 1 billion. At least uh, three of the uh, acquisitions that took place was uh, more than a billion dollars. Mellanox by NVIDIA, uh, Cray by HP, and you know, uh, OpenText by NVIDIA uh, for about a billion plus dollar. Top acquisition in 2020 has been more towards object storage, on-prem, cloud-hosted uh, uh, solutions, software-driven data storage, and management platform in these areas, actually. So that's been our observation. That's how, how the storage industry has been. Uh, let's talk a little bit about, you know, uh, the, uh, the uh, fast forwarding the industry uh, and, uh, you know, where the storage industries are. Uh, we'll, I'll let uh, Vipin cover these, area, uh, these slides. Vipin? Yeah, thank, thanks, Parath. So, uh, it's interesting, yeah, the amount of spending that has happened uh, in this year and also uh, Parag just showed us uh, what's been happening in the last few years. What has led us to this? If you look at the storage, contrary to the belief that it has been a pretty staid uh, kind of a growth, uh, if you look at it, one of the major things that has really helped uh, spur growth in this and has been a major disruptor is cloud. Uh, so this has become a, a disruptor in more in terms, not so much in terms of the disruptive technologies, but in the disruptive models that it has helped spawn. Uh, with cloud computing, so much is changing at such a fast clip that we are seeing strange market dynamics here. Uh, things like Kubernetes, whichever today, any Kubernetes platform that you, uh, that you choose, uh, you can deploy applications across disparate clouds with using the technology. Now, the, so the cloud barriers seem to have just melted away. Uh, for example, with uh, Anthos, uh, we can actually realize uh, seamless app management across uh, uh, public cloud and uh, applications in prem or in public cloud. Uh, this also has led uh, to uh, the, what this means is really we're going to get uh, application uh, portability. Now this application portability really means that customers uh, uh, can now evaluate the benefits of uh, public cloud or uh, private cloud and then they can choose uh, to leave the application in in-prem or go to the cloud. Uh, Either way, this augurs well for the for the storage industry. Um, this another interesting development. You know, we have had this uh, a tribe called DevOps. Then we have now Cloud Ops. All these developments and um, you know these kind of uh, changes that we're seeing, uh, this will actually need specialization, some more different kind of skills, uh, specialization largely in how we're going to manage these kind of operations and uh, migrate between these environment. So a very different kind of skill set will be required for this. Uh, where will all this lead? Well, we are also going to look at how uh, application delivery tools are going to evolve. And that's another space where we see uh, from our um, perspective, there's going to be a lot of uh, uh, development in uh, seeing how uh, application delivery tools uh, evolve. Um, one of the things that this is going to also see is what kind of, you know, we, we, let's look at the business opportunities that this generates. And to take a look at uh, what business opportunities we are going to see, uh, first let's see these disruptions which are caused by uh, cloud computing. Uh, these coupled with the technologies, you know, uh, Parag just talked about this whole um, personal cloud, um, the, the amount of mem uh, storage that is got in his uh, mobile phone compared to his laptop. The amount of storage that has been spurred and the kind of various different technologies are out there. This actually uh, means that we have to start thinking about how these technologies are applied for different kinds of applications. Um, not all storage is created equal. So there are preferences uh, based on the, the storage types that are there and also the kind of data that we want, the purpose of the data 
uh, the way we're going to use the data. So based on that, we'll, there's uh, a choice to be made as to what suits uh, those requirements uh, more appropriately. Uh, so this slide actually talks about some of those uh, changes that we're seeing and major application areas uh, that have now got created in the last almost a decade um, or even less than that, hybrid digital infrastructure. Uh, this has got a boost with the whole digital transformation that companies have embarked upon um, for enterprise applications that can reside either in the public cloud or on uh, on-prem data centers. Um, cloud storage or HCI serves the purpose. Uh, when you look at edge computing, for example, that's uh, another area where so many different kinds of applications uh, or new applications are going to get created. Uh, these applications need low latency and high performance elasticity and reduced complexity. So um, the right kind of uh, storage um, options that are there that will mend itself very well for um, these kind of applications are HCI, NVMe, cloud storage. Uh, when you talk about machine learning, machine learning again here you're talking about a huge capacity that is needed for you, um, intelligent decisions to be made intelligent. Uh, in, based on some insights that we get to do a lot after doing a lot of an, um, analysis. This requires a lot of huge, lot of capacity and uh, performance. So again, here, cloud storage, NVMe, persistent memory, these lend itself pretty well for um, machine learning uh, applications or wherever applications, uh, applications that wherever that we're going to use uh, machine learning. Uh, 5G, this is uh, uh, such, a, uh, uh, such a hugely anticipated technology where there is um, a lot of applications riding on the on this technology, a lot of ways, different ways of um, uh, bringing in applications and different applications around it. We're going to see this will probably be a major factor in fueling growth in the uh, digital content. Uh, this will lead to an increase in storage and memory solutions, things like uh, real-time rendering, caching, or buffering solutions. Uh, all these will demand low latency with you know, uh, uh, drive usage of SSDs in data centers and at the edge. So this is going to really spawn a, a, a huge growth. Um, IoT and data analytics, again, the amount of data that is going to get generated, it just simply leads to an explosion of data here. And uh, so much of analytics will be needed here that cloud storage and NVMe, again, will be the preferred choice of um, uh, storage option when we're talking about IoT and analytics. Uh, let's take a look at um, you know, each of these uh, technologies that we just um, briefly talked about. Um, how are these transforming uh, the entire landscape? So let's take a quick look. First, let's take a look at uh, Flash. Well, it's all about fast response times, being highly available, less energy consumption, reasonable TCO, and less physical space. Um, 5G applications will be a major factor here in fueling the growth. Uh, we're talking again, as I said earlier, uh, rendering, uh, real-time rendering, caching, uh, also demand for you know, uh, low latency kind of applications. And if you look at it, um, what we think the opportunity is here and the use cases will be all related to uh, fast response time, uh, the, the kind that you need in real-time analytics, uh, digital collaboration, um, also for um, autonomous uh, vehicles, um, you can just imagine the kind of uh, response times that we uh, that that these applications would demand. So uh, what we expect is um, all flash memory will be used uh, quite a lot in these kind of applications, and it's simply going to grow from here on. Um, the next one would be um, cloud storage. Um, Prag, if you could just uh, move on to the next slide, um, cloud storage. This is going to be, uh, again, this is, we're also used to this. Uh, ubiquitous, highly available, high elasticity. That's what comes to mind when you're talking about uh, cloud storage. And this, again, will be uh, fueled by a lot of these enterprise applications as part of the digital transformation. We're already seeing a lot of applications moving to the cloud and taking advantage of cloud storage. Um, not just that, we're also looking at in-prem data centers being protected by uh, DR solutions, which have cloud in the in the mix. Um, you know, I uh, when I talk about this, and I just right now just uh, I get reminded of 9/11. Uh, um, 
when we were actually dealing with uh, helping out customers uh, who were impacted by uh, that unfortunate um, incident. And they, you know, if there were cloud technologies or cloud storage available, imagine how many companies could have saved their data. Uh, well, as they say, there's a time for technology. And uh, well, but today we can see a lot of these applications uh, now storing data in the cloud. So this is something that is here to stay and a lot more uh, applications will take advantage of it and simply going to grow here. Yeah, and, and Vipin, if I may just uh, quickly jump in and add actually in one of the slides that I showed, uh, you know, the, the today, uh, you know, the maximum amount of funding that is happening is in the area of cloud storage. You know, the VCs are also looking at cloud storage as a, an area where, you know, the majority of the innovations that are happening. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, yeah th thanks for sharing that, uh, Parag. Um, then let's move on to uh, the next big transformative uh, technology that we're all very familiar with. It's been around for a few years now. That's uh, HCI. And um, uh, with HCI, it's essentially we're looking at um, reduced complexity, uh, overall infrastructure uh, cost being lowered. Um, this is, again, uh, it's a very good choice for distributed, comprehensive infrastructures that can be deployed in remote locations. You know, well suited for regional and branch office locations, um, you know, such as in you know, a retail point of sale uh, or local stores or um, in an in-branch banking platform. A uh, lot of data centers also could be actually um, using this. Um, we are also seeing uh, some applications where um, this, this could lead to something like a mini data center, uh, typically under the uh, tower for um, edge um, or going down the line, there are some, uh, some companies who have some vendors who are looking at, uh, in the telco space, who are looking at actually using some of the uh, HCI technologies also. Uh, we at CalSoft actually um, are working with companies in the IoT space, uh, specifically in the uh, manufacturing domain, where we see uh, when we are developing these uh, solutions and have deployed uh, HCI technologies being, uh, HCI storage and this entire technology being used for uh, monitoring and controlling uh, equipment in, in factories. Um, so again, there's a lot of, um, the, the, the flexibility that this technology brings is amazing. And we are seeing that there's going to be a, a growth in this, um, in this space also. Yeah, uh, and Vipin, uh, with regards to HCI, actually one of the things that I would like to add here is that, you know, the reason HCI has become a norm nowadays is because it hides the complexity of the infrastructure underneath one, uh, you know, uh, enclosure and, you know, allow the customer to focus on uh, the business critical applications. Um, you know, though I would say that the, the main glue in the HCI technology is the storage because, you know, uh, that is where the data are getting captured, but, you know, it, it hides the complexity of the storage underneath. Absolutely. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, the next one that we're seeing again, this is certainly um, going to take off uh, in a big way is what I think. And uh, from our experience, we're seeing NVMe, um, low latency and high performance. Um, in fact, now we're looking at um, a lot of these CDI, this composable disaggregated infrastructure uh, being created with this whole uh, NVMe or uh, fabric uh, and uh, this has emerged actually in that space as an ideal choice simply because it can deliver uh, high performance and uh, low latency. Uh, this is, um, again, we are seeing applications of um, uh, NVMe uh, in um, uh, edge computing as well as in um, the IoT applications that we're building for our customers. A uh, lot of uh, the, 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 the need for a real-time data processing and also the uh, the, the opportunity to mix different technologies with NVMe after all is just a protocol. And based on that protocol, I can actually um, enable uh, different options of um, uh, storage choices that I can bring to applications. And um, we're actually going to see, you know, I think that a lot of applications will be coming up which will uh, help manage intelligently the right kind of storage for the right kind of uh, uh, IO requirements. So I think that is something we'll uh, probably see quite a bit of um, uh, you know, NVMe uh, adoption. 
um, in, in, these, in, in these areas. Yeah. Uh, persistent uh, memory, again, this is, uh, truly speaking, actually, this is going to, we think that it is, it's going to be revolutionizing um, in another big way. Uh, this is ultra low latency. That is what comes to mind when talking about uh, persistent memory. Uh, this is ideal in environments that require frequent access to large and complex data sets. And, um, you know, we are seeing applications like uh, big data analytics and uh, in-memory databases. Truly, actually, we are yet to realize the full potential of this technology. Uh, imagine, imagine applications um, that, that, you know, that require data which is going to be persistent across power loss. Uh, potentially for the lifetime of the server and um, no more reloading data from external storage into the memory. The data that you need today that we were caching, we can say that, okay, with this technology, instead of caching, I can store it in personal, in, in this persistent memory and I can keep it there. This really revolutionizes the way we're going to um, access data, the way we're going to look at applications itself. I think this is a, a, a technology that is really uh, yet to uh, be, you know, the, the full potential of that is yet to, you know, something that we're probably going to see uh, in the coming years. And I, I, I expect in 2021, um, a full potential of this technology being realized by a lot of applications, a lot of vendors uh, will come to uh, bring this. Right. <clears throat> and Lipin, uh, while I transition to the next slide, uh, just one thing that I wanted to add about, uh, you know, which is what I talked about, uh, is the increase in the AI and ML and DL type of workloads. You know, um, both persistent memory and computational storage, I would say whether it's, uh, you know, the storage moving closer to compute or compute moving closer to storage, I think, you know, these AI and ML workloads are greatly benefited by these technologies. And as we see the rise in AI and ML, uh, you know, workloads, I think these are the technologies, uh, you know, in particular in the storage uh, segment actually are going to take a huge growth in the uh, upcoming years. And that's where we have also kind of related it back to the funding actually that is taking place. We right. see an increase in the funding in these two areas. Absolutely, yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, yeah similarly with, you know, with computational uh, storage, again, uh, high performance and getting this additional compute capacity with, uh, that, that is possible now with um, this whole computational storage paradigm. Um, as you said, emerging really newer AI and IoT applications that we are seeing uh, with our vendors, with our, sorry, with our uh, customers, uh, they require ever greater amounts of high performance storage. And uh, uh, this additional compute capacity that gets freed up from the host um, that can be put to use for a lot of uh, processing. So, um, you know, these, and in fact, another trend that we, uh, that we see is uh, NVMe and container technology. This is going to really, um, these two are going to be really the prime enablers for uh, computational storage. Um, again, here we see um, some of the companies that, um, that we have worked with um, are really betting quite a bit, just like the, um, uh, the slides that you presented earlier, Parag, uh, they suggest. This is a technology, again, that we see uh, will take off and, uh, again, we're not looking at, uh, you know, there's no, uh, given the times that we are in, um, looking glass, the crystal ball, rather, you know, I, something of, it's useless right now. But uh, we think that with the, with the way we are seeing these technologies being adopted, 2021 uh, should see a, a greater adoption of all these technologies, especially persistent memory, uh, computational storage, uh, NVMe. I think these are things which will really get adopted a lot by uh, all these new age uh, applications uh, spurred by 5G and uh, edge applications. So, yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, Vipin, uh, yes. Uh, so uh, let's talk a little bit about some of the disruptions. And actually, you know, uh, we wanted to primarily focus while there has been a lot of different disruptions in the storage and, you know, all the industries. Uh, you know, each disruption we have seen comes with some kind of an opportunities and the growth areas and things like that. And today, if we say that the biggest disruption that has come in everybody's life is uh, COVID-19. Uh, having said that, the technology industries uh, have been benefited with, uh, you know, th this disruption. And there has been given, uh, as I said, actually, there are opportunities for the growth of uh, different storage industry. 
So what are some of the growth areas because of the COVID-19? You know, the cloud data center spending will grow because of uh, you know, this disruption and cloud service provider will uh, drive the server business growth actually. You know, that is what we are saying. Cloud adoption, as we see that, you know, the spending on the servers will account for almost 47% of the, uh, uh, you know, CapEx this year. And that's going to create another growth opportunity for the storage industry. Digital enterprise will seek, uh, uh, you know, to conserve capital and, uh, you know, that is going to create uh, another, um, you know, uh, uh, another near term demand for the digital services. And that is going to create uh, yet another, uh, 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 you know, growth in the storage industry. 5G, as Vipin has already highlighted uh, in his uh, talk, actually the 5G network I mean, you know, and the machine to machine kind of communication all of these are going to generate a tremendous amount of data. So there is a big, uh, you know, positive because of the 5G, uh, you know, uh, coming on the horizon. Security, again, I think the IT spending on the security software will increase and, uh, you know, that will be yet another opportunity uh, for the storage to grow. Uh, HCI, actually, that's another, uh, you know, platform basically that is on the rise. There has been a lot of funding that has happened in this area. Uh, cloud adoption, there has been another, uh, you know, a lot of funding that has happened in this area. So these are the technologies which are going to be on the upspring, uh, upswing uh, and, you know, we will see in the coming year more growth in each of these areas. Vipin, uh, you want to talk about some of the, what we see as a storage net where we... See, yeah, this uh, is interesting. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Parag. Yeah. You know, uh, so what's next? Do you wonder um, after all these changes that uh, that we have witnessed and everything that we just touched upon? Uh, for a long time now, storage technology progress has been measured in terms of capacity and speed. Uh, we have seen that is no longer the case. Uh, we have seen demands uh, for storage to be smart, to be flexible and easy to manage. When we look at the hybrid models that we are seeing, you know, with um, uh, cloud storage, with HCI, with um, uh, computational storage and all that, truly a hybrid model where data can move from any place to any one type of storage to another type, whether it's in-prem or in the cloud. This actually can lead us to, you know, we think that this is going to complicate uh, the whole storage management. But that's precisely the, uh, the, the need that gets generated here. And uh, seamless management is what will be uh, required here to make sure that um, I'm able to, as an administrator, able to very effectively manage the data uh, wherever it resides. You know, today we're talking about a cloud gateway that's already integrated in enterprise storage. Analysis. We're talking about uh, uh, persistent uh, memory. We're talking about data residing in, uh, uh, in, in, the, in the persistent memory, uh, uh, the, the, those uh, uh, flash memory, for example, or um, you know, different, um, uh, different storage choices that we have now. So seamless management um, of these, um, all this data that is residing will be certainly in all these different uh, storage uh, will be actually something that will be required. Uh, also, an intelligent way, as an administrator, it's going to be very difficult or even as a developer to make those choices. Where should uh, a particular kind of data reside? Based on SLAs, based on uh, looking at the type of data and based on the requirement as to how much, uh, what is the need for uh, the response time when I'm looking at different kind of data, which is again dictated by the kind of applications uh, uh, that that we're serving, there will be a need to um, come up with uh, some way of how I can decide intelligently whether the data should stay in uh, persistent memory or it should stay in the cloud or it should go into one of the uh, one of the uh, SSD drives in, in HCI infrastructure that I've created. How do we decide this? So uh, intelligent way, so we're looking at uh, AI ML being used here uh, based on historical um, information about uh, patterns of usage, uh, we are going to see there's going to be applications which will intelligently decide where the data should reside. Uh, so that's another area. Obviously, when we're talking about uh, these many choices of where the data can reside, 
we're talking about recessive. We're opening up many fronts. We're opening up a lot more vectors to get attacked um, simply because of the number of surfaces that are now going to get exposed. So uh, there, are, there are going to be choices, there are going to be opportunities for us to start uh, looking at um, the security aspects of data. Uh, simply uh, allowing access is not going to be there. So there's going to be a lot of access management issues that we have to think about. Uh, policies that we'll have to come up with um, when as an administrator uh, to see which data resides where. So uh, a lot of uh, security applications will have to come up which will um, address these requirements, address these needs. Um, so yeah, I think looking at all these uh, changes, yeah. uh, as they say, data center uh, always needs to change uh, with changing times. And uh, I think the amount of change that has occurred in data centers is tremendous in the last two decades itself. <clears throat> with all these changes happening, sometimes you wonder whether uh, data centers are uh, are going to be, you know, are they the, is the requirement, the, the way data centers are going to uh, be, are they going to shrink? Uh, we are already seeing some of those changes. Uh, probably it will be more distributed than we're already seeing today. Uh, plus, the example that uh, Para gave, with the amount of data that uh, people carry, the reliance on staying that, uh, keeping all the data in data center, plus the fear of uh, when I'm keeping my data, personal data out there in the cloud and all these different uh, uh, storage options that I have, is that something that I need to be worried about? Today, if I have to actually give uh, my data, um, my, some information about where I am, maybe I need that information because I'm, I'm traveling, I need to get directions. So that much information or sharing that information is fine. But any other information, like Parag said earlier, personal information is there on the uh, mobile phones. How much of that do I need to actually expose? Do I have control today? No. If it's all in the cloud, certainly not. So are we going to look at a world where we are going to see uh, a personal cloud where I can actually, and some applications have already come up, uh, where I can actually make sure that um, data that is absolutely personal, which I do not want to share, I would like to actually keep this by creating in my home uh, uh, with all the storage div, uh, that's available. I can simply create a personal cloud. That's good enough for my purpose. I can actually decide, I can control what needs to be exposed and how much can stay within my control. That's my personal cloud. I can save it, I can keep it uh, in my personal cloud and expose only whatever is needed. So. Probably we're looking at a world where there's so many choices available. Uh, you know, the personal cloud could be a reality very in the in the near future. Any any yeah, thoughts, and within, Yeah, and within the, you what you said uh, rightly actually. You know, so far the storage uh, was measured in terms of capacity and speed, uh, but you know the new trends are that you know the storage to be measured in terms of you know how smart it is, flexibility is, how easy it is to access, and uh, how secure it is actually. You know because a lot of critical data is getting stored, uh, and you know the example that I took where you know my choice of buying uh, more uh, storage on my uh, mobile actually kind of enabled uh, that belief in me that you know uh, the the data should be close to me, it should be accessible to me. Uh, it should be secure with me. And then basically, you know, uh, there is this cloud and other storage actually. So there has been a new trend which has been evolving. And as you rightly said, actually, you know, it's not just about speed and capacity. It's about how smart and flexible and secure the storage is. Well, folks, uh, you know, thanks. Uh, uh, and, you know, we try to kind of uh, show you the landscape of storage, how the storage technology has evolved. You know, what were the factors, what are the different segments in the storage which are driving the growth uh, of the storage. Uh, we hope uh, we were able to cover, I know that this is, you know, the storage industry is 30 or 40 year old actually, and, you know, capturing every single piece of it is not possible. But, uh, you know, we have shown in the last couple of decades how there has been a transformation, what are the different technologies which are uh, bringing in this transformation. Uh, as we see it from, you know, uh, uh, from our perspective, working with uh, various different product companies in the storage space. And, you know, as we are observing the, uh, the disruption that has taken place, actually, as well as you know, the opportunity that it, these are created in the storage space. 
so hopefully that was uh, you know something that uh, uh, you guys would have taken uh, as a note and uh, if there are any questions we will be happy to address them uh, thank you very much for being part of this presentation and we look forward to meeting you in other sessions in uh, the snia development uh, conference uh, i want to also take an opportunity to, to thank uh, uh, the sdc team uh, for giving us this opportunity and uh, you know uh, organizing this uh, keynote and we look forward to uh, working with you folks as a uh, you know uh, platinum partner with uh, sdc thanks thank you